Hello, my name is Domino Joyce. I'm in the Department of Biological and Marine Sciences at the University of Hull and I wanted to talk to you a bit about cichlid fish because they're really, really cool. So they're great for studying evolution because they're really good at it. They've evolved into thousands of species over a really, really sh relatively short time frame. So there's a graph here, so you can see this is millions of years and we've got um, Lake Victoria and you can see there's hardly any time has gone here at all and not very much time here at all in Lake Malawi and yet you have hundreds and hundreds of species who evolved. So they're great to study the effects of selection on how populations can go from being kind of one population to diverging and becoming two different populations and eventually getting more and more different until they become different species. So that's what I'm interested in and I use a combination of um, behaviour, morphology and genetics to try and understand that in all these systems. Um, so the Great Lakes of East Africa are where a lot of this action has happened um, and you can see, so in terms of natural selection, you can see hopefully some of the um, strange face shapes in the, in the pictures. So you can see that there are really like long thin fish like these and actually you find that they've evolved uh, sort of multiple times with parallel evolution. Um, they're so, so they're sort of uh, long streamlined fish with big mouths and sharp teeth, so they're piscivores, um, they eat other fish. You get um, very snub-nosed fish with kind of scraping teeth um, inside their mouths and they're really good at scraping algae off the rocks. Um, you get a very kind of fat-lipped fish which um, press their lips against like the crevices between rocks and suck out invertebrates. Uh, you have fish with um, pharyngeal jaws um, and they, they're but they all have pharyngeal jaws and some of them have especially adapted ones which they can crush snails with. So lots of um, there's lots of evolutionary pressures which have um, led to them being able to inhabit a whole range of ecological niches in these lakes. The other really cool thing is sexual selection. So sexual selection is what means that some individuals are better at reproducing, they have more offspring than others. And an example of this is this beautiful Pundamelia neurari male. Um, he's really, really bright red and he uses that brightness and redness to signal his quality um, and his ability to maintain a territory both to males and females. So often in these fish you, the, you have sexual dimorphism, so the males and females look very different. Often the females are very dull um, and the, females are, uh, the males are the really bright, colourful ones. So all the fish um, in this picture are males, they're really, really, really colourful. But the other cool thing is the females um, mouth brood. So you can see in this bottom picture, this is a pseudocrenolabrus fish, and um, she's got this really kind of bulging chin. And that's because she's looking after her young in there, and she does that for about three weeks. So what happens when these fish um, mate is the males are kind of doing their, uh, they're sort of showing off, they're showing off their quality with um, lots of um, courtship behaviour and their bright colours. Some of them even build, some species build sand castles to attract females, all these sorts of um, very um, showing off activities that the males do. Uh, and then the females will select which males they want to mate with and then they will, uh, the males will court them and they'll have a kind of like do a little sort of um, courtship circle um, and then the female will lay uh, a couple of eggs and then she quickly turns around when she's laid them and picks them up in her mouth to look after them and as she does that the male releases the sperm and they're, they're fertilized either just outside or just inside the mouth and then she lays up between about typically about 50 eggs sometimes up to 70 and she carries them and they, they develop in her mouth and so she looks after them for about three weeks. So the males in these species, in the majority of these species, do um, no parental care so the only thing they contribute really is genes. So that's why the females are so keen to choose the males based on the impressiveness of their display because we think it's a, a, an indication that um, that he's in good quality and therefore he can fend off parasites and he has a good set of genes to, to help him forage for food and do all those things. So that's sexual selection. Um, what else do I want to tell you? They're the main things. Uh, we have amazing facilities for studying these fish at Hull. So you can see a QR code on the slide. If you um, visit that link, there's a virtual tour of the aquarium, which is not quite as good as the uh, main, the real life tour, but pretty good. Uh, and so we can set up uh, projects and things like that and do experiments in the, in the aquarium. Um, yeah, I think that's everything.